Asking for an extension on your deadline of submission? Is that a no-no? I have the answer to that, plus other top questions from the comment sections on this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Hey, what's happening? Welcome back to Speak Easy. This is where we hang out to talk about your career as a voiceover talent, especially if you're just starting out. If we're meeting for the very first time, hi, my name is Anna and I am a freelance voiceover talent. And really the goal of this channel is to help new and home-based voiceovers with tips and tricks that I swear by. So if you're interested in more videos like this one, do subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell just so you know if I have new videos out. As you know, I always make sure that I answer questions that are coming in through my comment sections. And if I see the same question asked more than three times, I usually feature them on this segment called top three questions from the comment section so that I can help more of you out. And honestly, answering your questions, I feel is the best way of helping you out. So without further ado, let me present today's top three questions from the comment section, starting off with question number three. Question number three says, are $5 gigs okay to start? If I have more clients later on, can I charge my rate or is it locked in for the gigs you posted? Let me start off with the first question. Are $5 gigs okay to start? So assuming that you are new to the voiceover world, yes, this is the best place to start. Well, not the best, but it's a good place to start. Why? Because it's a good way to test the waters, especially if you don't know your capabilities yet as a voiceover talent. So this is good because you have an actual client who will give you instant feedback about your output. So it's a good place to start. Yes. And then he says, if I have more clients later on, can I change my rate or is it locked in for the gigs you posted? Definitely once you've gotten your feet wet and you know how much to charge and you know how fast certain clients want their orders in and how fast you actually work, you can start adjusting your rate as you see fit. So you're not locked into that forever. One more thing, just because your gig profile says $5, it doesn't mean that all of your orders will just be $5. Remember, that's your starting rate and that's just for the bare minimum. Bare minimum means you're just going to record a certain amount of words and edit it and then that's it. But if they need something else, if they need a provision for revision, charge extra for that. If they need you to split up the files, charge extra for that. So it doesn't have to be $5 all the time, especially if you have clients who have specific things in mind that is not part of the $5 package. So yes, $5 gigs, definitely okay. Thank you so much for sending in that question. So let's move on to the next one. But Bye. before that, if you're already finding value in this video, do give me a thumbs up right now and also share this with your friends who are also aspiring to be voiceover talents. All right, on to question number two. This one is coming from Brenda, which was sent in through my Instagram account. She says, is it okay to ask for extension with a deadline of submission? Now, I know that a lot of you who are just starting out on voiceover, you are pretty apprehensive to ask for an extension when it comes to your deadlines and rightly so because it might make you look unprofessional or it might give your client the impression that you're not as good as you are selling yourself out to be or maybe you're just afraid that it might affect your fiverr ratings and those are all valid concerns but since you're asking me this is how i feel about asking for an extension First of all, as much as I can before I even finalize the order or before I even accept an order, I really talk to my client. So I make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to the deadlines. And I am pretty honest if my plate is really full and I'm sure that I cannot deliver because I don't want that to affect my standing with the client as well as on Fiverr. So I make sure that if I cannot deliver when they want me to deliver, then I will just respectfully decline or I can negotiate the deadline. But please understand that this is before I accept the job order. But there are instances where you can definitely ask for an extension on your deadline or at least try to ask for an extension. 
Number one, they sent you a custom offer with a deadline you did not agree to. Number two, the requirements you needed from your clients were not submitted in order for you to start the job on time. Number three, you overestimated the project and now you are pushing yourself and your voice too much. This actually happened to me not so long ago and I was recording for the series of recordings and I had to finish it in 10 sessions, including editing. And I, I was way in over my head. I could not finish it. I was recording eight pages in a day and trying to edit it on the same day. And I knew I wasn't going to uh, put out quality recordings. So I had to swallow my pride and contact the client and ask for an extension. And because the project was not right, rushed and the client was really, really nice. And I had good standing with the client. They happily agreed to give me an extension and I was able to finish it without hurting my voice, without feeling overwhelmed and with delivering quality recordings as well. So in these instances, definitely ask for an extension from your clients. I really hope that answers your question, Brenda. Okay, before we move on to the next question, I just really wanted to start featuring some comments for top three questions from the comments section because you guys really send in some lovely messages. Some are thanking me, some are just showing gratitude, some are just sharing their success story. So even if I cannot feature all of them, I want to start featuring some of them to signify that I am so grateful for all the comments that you send in. So my very first featured comment for top three questions questions from the comments section is coming from Genesis Domingo says, I just had to come back here to say thanks, Anna. I got my first order on Fiverr. Yay. And I don't think I would have done it if I didn't follow your tips. Thank you so much, Genesis, for sharing that with me. It makes it all worth it to be honest. And really, I'm just here to help you guys out to help you make a career out of your voice. And Genesis Domingo, keep on keeping on and let me know how you fare. Okay, thank you once again, Genesis Domingo, our very first featured comment for top three questions from the comment section. Right. Okay, just before we get to the last question of the day, a simple reminder that if you do want to support the channel, the easiest thing to do is just like and share the videos and also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to take it a step further, you can also not skip any of the ads that are shown on the videos on this channel. And if you want to keep on sending me your support, you can also send some love by hitting the super thanks button at the bottom of the screen here or here. It's that heart icon with the dollar sign inside of it. Just hit that and send some love my way. I will be so grateful whichever way you want to show your support, but I'm really more than happy to share my tips and tricks to you for free. So let's get down to question number one. Question number one, I noticed freelancers also do technical stuff. Is it normal? Do we charge separately? I am not good with technical stuff. Okay, since this is your voiceover business, you do have to know some basic technical stuff to run the business because this is a technically a one man band thing, you know, you have to do everything because it's just you. So you have to record yourself. So you have to know how to set up your microphone to your computer. And you also have to know to edit the file to clean it up. And you also have to know how to um, produce quality recording without the echoes, without the reverbs, without noise floor and all of those things. You have to know basic stuff. Remember, your basic rate provides quality recording and quality editing, which means you have to clean up the file. What can you separately charge for? Because you said you're not good with technical stuff. A non-technical stuff would be just saving it into WAV format so you can charge for that. For a more technical stuff that you can charge for, uh, putting in music, you can charge for that. Make sure it's royalty free. And what else? Dubbing over video. So that means putting your voice over an actor's uh, voice, making sure that it's in sync with the movement of the mouth. You can charge for that. So there are so many things that you can charge for but there are some things that 
you need to know how to do in order to run your voice over business. Okay, so I hope that's clear. And um, good luck to you. I'm sure you can do it. Everything that you don't know how to do, you can learn. You just have to put in the time. All right. All right. So there you have it. Our top three questions of the day. They all came in from the comment sections, whether here on YouTube or Instagram or my Facebook account. And I'll make sure that uh, I have the info somewhere in here so that you can follow me in all these platforms. Okay. So send in your comments there and you'll never know. You might be featured in the next top three questions from the comment section. And with that, I wish you all a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.